So something that prophets and prophetic people do is we notice patterns. And particularly within other prophets and prophetic people, um, whatever you're called to, you're going to be drawn to. I mean, and that goes for every facet of life. But um, particularly in the kingdom of God, when you are called to a certain office or when you are called to a certain ministry, you are going to be drawn to what you are. And so I myself am very, very drawn to other prophets and like, um, what God will do is after you've gone after him for, you know, and it, it's not a certain length of time. I mean, you can go just all about your walk with him and not everybody's walk looks the same. So, but God will take you through discernment and he will sharpen your discernment so that you can determine who is hearing from him and who is not. And one thing that I have, you know, said before in some of my other videos, and I will say again, is that those that are, they stir up feelings of fear. They stir up feelings of jealousy or they stir up feelings of, you know, me putting myself up on a pedestal. Like, I'll give you guys an example. I started following this one lady. I'm not going to mention any names. And I liked her content at first, but then I started feeling condemned by some of her content. And I thought, well, you know, maybe it's just me because I, I always bring myself before the Lord. Like, is it me, God? Is my heart, is something wrong with my heart? But then I started noticing a pattern that she started bad-mouthing a lot. Uh, she's been bad-mouthing a lot of prophets, prophetic people, and just pastors, um, people who are anointed, people who I follow, and basically kind of making fun of them. That's when I unfollowed her. I was like, okay, um, that's not a ministry. That's you feeling the need to go and be God's police officer. And God didn't call you to be his police officer. He called you, first of all, to love him and then love others as you want to be loved. So, but anyway, I'm going to pray and then I'm going to get into this because um, I want to... I, I started this out, this whole preface of noticing patterns um, with some of the people that I really look up to. And you can go and look at my featured channels and see, you know, these people probably don't know that I exist, but I look up to them. Their ministry pours into me. And I know that these people are hearing from God. And so... um What's crazy is God, you will be hearing the same things that somebody that doesn't even know that you exist is hearing. And I happened to watch a, uh, a reel of Kent Christmas, like taken from like a whole prophetic sermon that he did just a few days ago. And something that he said was that, God is getting ready to judge the wicked. And now God showed me a vision of that in 2019 where I saw a pyramid Ferris wheel and the wicked were in the top cart and people that were full of pride and full of themselves were on the side cart while the, the people that have been humbled were on the very bottom cart. And that whole thing shifted. The wicked were thrown out and the ones that had patted themselves on the back 
and full of themselves were pushed to the bottom, while those who had been humbled were exalted. And something that Pastor Kent said was that we are living in Isaiah 60. Now, I have said that. I, I have videos. I, I, I think that it's called something about Isaiah 60 is a now word. I think I did that video like two or three years ago. And I'm not saying that to brag. I'm just saying I heard from God. He heard from God. And there is a lot of people out there that are also hearing that or along those lines from God. And so that can't be a coincidence. Another thing that I want to say is that prophecy is timeless. And what that means is when you can look this up in uh, Ecclesiastes, basically history repeats itself. You know, um, it's pretty crazy. All right. So father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I want to come before you today and I want to repent for just some of the attitudes of my heart lately towards you and towards others. I want to repent because, um, I have, I have relied on things other than you to get me through this difficult time. And I don't want to struggle with those things anymore. I want to completely surrender to you and give my heart to you and not have anything coming in between you and me in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, I ask that for anyone else that feels that way today, that God, you would just give us a victory in these areas that we may struggle with. We all struggle in different areas. And some of us have an addictive personality. Some of us, um, we judge others and pat ourselves on the back because we compare ourselves to others. And some of us, some of us are guilty of jealousy. Some of us are guilty of pride. Some of us are guilty of lust. Some of us are guilty of indulgence. Whatever the case may be, Father, we ask that you would give us victory in these areas that easily beset us. We ask, God, that you would just take a hold of us this Passover and burn out all of the impurities. And God, I thank you for your patience. And I ask that you would help me to give that to others to truly love people, God, the way that I want to be loved, but to love you above all else. I surrender this to you. And Lord, just like the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 64, where he was crying out to you for mercy and for help. And I highly recommend that you guys read Isaiah 64. It won't take you very long. I, we are crying out for mercy and help in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So what I want to share with you guys today is in Isaiah 65. It is basically, I am echoing what Pastor Kent Christmas was saying in the reel that I saw. Um, God, I... I really did open my Bible to this. Now, I was deliberately reading in the New Testament, but I just, for some reason, randomly opened my Bible and it went to Isaiah because I just loved that book. <laughs> and, um, but I haven't read, like, I, I'm usually around Isaiah, like, between 40 and 61, but chapters, but I happened to read Isaiah 65 
And I just felt like the Spirit of God said, this, this, right here. And I mean, everybody feels that something is coming, but none of us know what it is. And God is doing that on purpose. So that nobody can claim that they knew. Nobody can pat themselves on the back and be like, I was the special ch among the special chosen few. No, because he's going to get the glory. Okay, so Isaiah 65 says this in the Amplified Version of the Bible. I let myself be sought by those who did not ask for me. I let myself be found by those who did not seek me. I said, here I, I am, here I am. To the nation which did not call on my name, I have spread out my hands all the day long to a rebellious and stubborn people who walk in a way that is not good, of following after their own thoughts and intentions. The people who continually provoke me to my face, sacrificing to idols in gardens and making offerings with incense on bricks instead of at the designated altar who sit among the graves trying to conjure up evil spirits and spend the night in the secret places where the spirits are thought to dwell, who eat swine's flesh and their pots hold the broth of unclean meat, who say, keep to yourself, do not come near me. Mind you, they're saying this to God. For I am too holy for you and you might defile me. These people are smoke in my nostrils, a fire that burns all day. Indeed, it is written before me, I will not keep silent, but I will repay. I will repay it directly into their arms. Both your own wickedness and the wickedness of your fathers, says the Lord, since they too have made offerings with incense on the mountains and scorned and taunted me on the hills. I therefore will measure punishment for their former work directly into their arms. This is what the Lord says. As the new wine is found in the cluster, and one says, do not destroy it, for there is a blessing and benefit in it. So I will do for the sake of my servants in order not to destroy all of them. I will bring forth descendants from Jacob and heir of my mountains from Judah. Even my chosen ones shall inherit it, and my servants will live there. And the plain of Sharon will be a place for flocks to graze, and the valley of Achor a resting place for herds. For my people who seek me, who long for me, and require my presence in their lives. I'm going to repeat that in case you missed it. This is for my people who seek me, who long for me and require my presence in their lives. Those are the chosen of God. Okay. But you who abandon and turn away from the Lord, who forget and ignore my holy mountain, Zion, which means the dwelling place of God. And so if you have come to him and you know him through a relationship with Jesus, then you are the dwelling place of God. Who set a table for Gad, who is the Babylonian, Babylonian God of fortune, and who fill a jug of mixed wine for many, the God of fate. I'm going to stop myself right there because I want to explain something. This doesn't just mean those two gods, which are fallen angels. It means any fallen angels. Okay, <laughs> moving along. I will destine you for the sword, says the Lord, and all of you will bow down to the slaughter. Because when I called, you did not answer. When I spoke, you did not listen or obey. But you did what was evil in my sight and chose that in which I do not delight. Therefore, the Lord God says this, listen carefully, my servants will eat, but you will be hungry. My servants will drink, but you will be thirsty. My servants will rejoice, but you will be put to shame. Indeed, my servants will shout for joy from a happy heart, but you will cry 
with a heavy heart. And you shall wail and howl from a broken spirit. And you will leave your name behind to my chosen ones who will use it as a curse. And the Lord God will put you to death. But he will call his servants by another name, a much greater name, just as the name Israel was greater than the name Jacob. Because he who blesses himself on the earth will bless himself by the God of truth and faithfulness, and he who swears an oath on the earth will swear by the God of truth and faithfulness, because the former troubles are forgotten and because they are hidden from my sight. Behold, I am creating new heavens and a new earth, and the former things of life will not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever over what I create. Behold, I am creating Jerusalem to be a source of rejoicing and her people a joy. I will also rejoice in Jerusalem and be glad in my people. There will no longer be heard in her the voice of weeping and the sound of crying. No longer shall there be in it an infant who lives only a few days or an old man who does not finish his days. For the youth who dies at the age of a hundred and the one who does not reach the age of a hundred will be thought of as accursed. They will build houses and live in them. They will plant vineyards and eat the fruit. They will not build and another occupy. They will not plant and another eat the fruit. For as the lifetime of a tree, so will be the days of my people, and my chosen people will fully enjoy and long make use of the work of their hands. They will not labor in vain or bear children for disaster, for they are the descendants of those blessed by the Lord and their offspring with them. It shall also come to pass before they call, I will answer, and while they are still speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb will graze together. The lion will eat straw like the ox. There will no longer be predator and prey, and dust will be serpent's food. They will do no evil or harm in all my holy mountain Zion, says the Lord. Now, the last part of this, this from verses 17 on, the new heavens and the new earth, do I believe that that is a right away? Not necessarily, but I could be wrong on that. <laughs> I don't, I mean, I, I have no idea. But I do know that there is a reason why so many prophets and prophetic people are hearing the same thing from God about the judgment of the wicked. And why God keeps bringing me back to it because it's, it's second Peter, uh, three, nine. In fact, let's go there real quick. Cause I don't want to misquote it. Second Peter three, nine says the Lord does not delay as though he were unable to act and is not slow about his promise as some count slowness, but is extraordinarily patient with you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. That is why we have not seen the fulfillment of it yet. Let me read that again in case you missed it. The Lord does not delay as though he were unable to act and is not slow about his promise as some count slowness. One of those has been me. I will admit it. And I've had to repent for my attitude. But is extraordinarily patient toward you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. And it should be our heart today. If we truly know the Lord and we truly know his love, it should be our heart to want to see everyone come to him. no matter who they are. If God, if Jesus Christ could walk the earth and forgive the most wicked of sinners, who, and those who truly repent and come to him, their sins are forgiven. Who are we? Who are we? 
to judge and criticize and condemn somebody because of what we've heard. All right, guys. I hope that this message blessed you today. It was a, he a heavy one, but sometimes there will be days like that. All right. As always, I love you. God bless you. And I will see you in the next video.